service. I think the title of my message is Until You and I Are One. Amen? Because that is really kind of a big part of what the Lord put on my heart. Out of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, and I think the majority of my text is coming from the King James, I believe. I don't remember using any other translation, but out of the scripture in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, and then going on to 27 after, it says, The Lord said, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image of God created he him, created he him, male and female created he them. So this is the word of God. And I believe this is the word of God. Amen. This is not the word of man. That's what many people try to argue. Oh, no, that's not the Bible's not that there's books missing. No, I'm tired of all these arguments And God breathed the word of God into man and he put it on paper for mankind to understand his heart and his character. And, and the word of God says this is how it started, my friend. God created man and woman and he created them in such a way that he reached down there and if you know the story he reached that his hand down whatever God's hand looks like he reached it down there and he molded it out of the earth and clay and and he breathed his life giving power and made him become a living soul and the beautiful thing about the difference between man and other animals is that we we are spiritual we are spiritual beings and, and we're never going to die as a spirit and we have the ability to have God consciousness that means you and and I see our spirit until we're born again is not alive to God but you have the ability and yes the intellect but intellect by itself does not make you God conscious because you can be I know some smart neurologists and I know some smart cardiologists and they're inventing stents and they're inventing all kinds of other things but they don't know the first thing about God they don't believe in God and let me tell you something all their intellect is not going to get them into the place where they wish that they would have been and until and unless they allow the Lord to deal with their heart, they're going to find they're going to find out in the hard way that they believe something that wasn't true. But I'm here to tell you that you have the opportunity, amen, to to have your spirit awakened to the yeah. truth of God and have a relationship with God. And so He reached down there and He molded him and He breathed life into him. And in both of these scriptures, it talked about the word image. And I, and I got to be honest with you, that's a big part. Of what I want to talk to you about tonight is image and creation and specifically about being a new creation. I want to talk to you tonight about being a new creation in Christ. And, and, and God reached down there and he, he created that first man. And when he created him, the earth was not fallen. There was no sin upon the earth. Um, and, and, and in that word, in that Hebrew word uh, image, some, there's a lot of different words connected to it. It can sometimes it's used for an idol because an idol can be a representation or an image of something else, right? Sometimes it, can, it has the word shade connected to it. It has the word phantom and connected to the word phantom is shadow. And, and what, what, what the word of God is telling us is that the image of God, that mankind was like a shadow or a reflection or an image that, that it, you know, the late Dr. Michael Heiser said that God created you to be an imager of God. He turned it into a verb. He created you to be an imager of God. So the Bible's true. I'm talking to Christian. I'm talking to the church tonight. When I'm, when I'm out there in the world and at the clinics or in Walmart or on the street, I use the conjunction if a lot because not everybody believes like I do. But, I'm, but you came to church tonight, so I'm talking to church people that walk up in the church tonight. I'm here to tell you that the, the Word of God is true. And, and what the Word of God says is that mankind was created in the image and likeness of God and that God's plan for you was that you would be an image of the glory of God. Amen. He wanted mankind to reflect his goodness and his glory. See, when it talks about image and likeness, you're not going to convince me. I'll use some kind of weird words, but I'll explain to you what I'm talking about. And he's not talking about that man was a bipedal being, that he was walking upright, not like a baboon every now and then scruffing his knuckles. That's not what God was talking about. God was talking about his character and his nature, his holiness, 
who he was, that whenever he created Adam in his image and his likeness, there was no sin because sin had not come into the earth yet. And so mankind was going to be a reflection of God's glory, but then deception came in. That's why you are the way you are, and that's why I am the way that I am, but I got good news for you tonight. You don't have to stay the way you are, and I sure up am not going to settle for staying the way that I am. I'm going to keep on moving into the glory of God and allowing the Holy Ghost to do a work on the inside of me. And so that lion snake came into the garden and he started like, you know, it's whispered, you know, I, I'm not going to try to pretend like I'm a snake because that looks weird. But you, you all know what a snake looks like. And he's whispering his lies and he's bringing his deception and he's convincing people, oh, listen, Eve, if you'll just listen to me, if what you always wanted, I'm going to give it to you. How many times have you been whispered to and lied to and convinced that if you would do what this lie was telling you, that it was just going to bring you so much joy, so much happiness? And am I just preaching to myself tonight? Have you ever experienced that before when the opportunity to engage in the lie even caused your heart to flutter a little bit like a butterfly? And then the next thing you know, you open up the door to the lie and instead of it bringing light, instead of it bringing hope, it puts you in a pit of darkness. It puts you in a pit of something that you didn't even know how in the world you were going to get out of. But I'm here to tell you tonight that if you'll trust the Lord and let him put you down, come on somebody, you have to die. If you want the Lord to work in your life and if you want to become a new creation, the old man that you were that was born of Adam is going to have to die. You know, listen, I didn't know who exactly was going to be here tonight. I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't know. And what the Lord put in my heart was this. <laughs> you can go ahead and tell them that if they're just looking to get off of a certain drug, or if they're looking just to get off of alcohol, or if they're looking just to get free from internet pornography, or if they're looking just to get free from a sex addiction, they can go find a self-help program somewhere down the road, but they showed up to the wrong place. Because see, in the house of the Lord, what he wants is everything. And the word of God says, he will not be lived until he has it all. You can go find an AA meeting and you can stay in bondage in your mind and wish that you were still able to do it, but you know that you can't because it's going to kill you. That ain't the kind of God that's written about in the yes. Scripture. That is not the kind of God that's written about in the Scripture. He said you must die. He wants it all. He wants your will to become the will of the Father. Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. Yes. Jesus died, we must die. Yes. Jesus said, any man going to follow after me, he must pick up his cross. Hallelujah. He said that he who tries to save his life is going to lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will yes. gain yes. eternal yes. life. Yes. You ain't going to limp into heaven, living halfway in the world and halfway in the church, my friend. It ain't going to work that way. No, Jesus died to pay a high price, not just so you can be saved, but so you could be transformed. Yeah, the yeah, Lord yeah. here to transform some people tonight. Right. And if you'd be willing to believe him, and that's our problem. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. We don't believe his word. I'm talking to church folk tonight. Yeah. We don't believe his word. Yeah. If we believed his word for the way that it's written, we would see the power of God transform our lives. Yeah. I'm going to talk to you about the word of God tonight. Yeah. You know, look, this isn't even part of my message, but I have to say because it it's so good. Just imagine the fact that God reached down there and formed no wonder God hates idols. Come on. God done reached down there and formed man with his own hands, and now man turns around and forms idols with his hands and turns around and calls it God. Yes, yes. No on. wonder the Antichrist, That's good. come on, church, That's better wake good. up. No wonder the Antichrist in Revelation chapter 13 is going to create an image and they're going to give life to it. They're going to demand mankind to worship because it's the, one of the greatest offenses that could ever happen in the face of God. But I want you to know this, is that God's purpose of fashioning man with his hand was that man was to be a reflection of his glory, an imager of God. And even in the Greek, the word is icon. I mean, if I had a piece of chalk, I know I probably got one somewhere around here. This is how the word is, is written in the Greek, icon. And it's where we get the word icon. <laughs> which is a symbol, a representation of something else. And I want you to know that in the Greek language is the New Testament. 
Why, that's why that's important because we're going to talk about the word image not just in the Old Testament but in, but in the New Testament. Because you see, in the Old Testament when God originally created mankind, again, he created him in his image and likeness. And I want you to know that that's the story of being born again. Amen. That's why man must be born again. And look at Ephesians chapter 4 verse 24 says this, and that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You know, I've been preaching for a long time now. I mean, pretty, pretty good while. I started preaching, I don't know, I was in my 20s. And I'm getting close to 60. <laughs> I am, I'm getting close to 60. But look, I, want, I always focused on the new man. Because see what the scripture says? If you go up a little bit higher, it says that you have not so learned Christ Jesus and that you need to put off the old man. See, the old man is the man that was born in Adam. The old man is the man that was born in Adam and born bound in sin. Yes. But the word of God says that if you've been taught Christ, that you have become a new creation yes. in Christ Jesus. And I always focused on, he said, take off the old man and put on the new man. So when you get truly born again, if you've never been converted, you'll have an opportunity tonight to take a, to, to, to choose yes. Jesus for, yes. for yourself. Amen. You'll have an opportunity before this is over with. Yes. And, you'll, and you'll either receive him tonight or you won't. And, and, and it's going to be okay. I mean, it's going to be okay one way or the other. I mean, you, you get the point. Let's just not keep on that. So you put on the new man. But listen, look at this. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. I want you to see that word created right there. Because I want you to understand that the same way that man was created when he created Adam, but after Adam fell, man was born. And the scripture says he was born in the image and likeness of Adam. But in order, but whenever you get born again, the scripture is saying that there's a new creation that's taking place. Look at, and I want, you, I want you to see that. Is everybody with me on that? That when you get born again, that a new creative miracle takes place on the inside of you. Something happens on the interior of, of who you were. It's changed. And, and i got to tell you something. <clears throat> Until that happens, you cannot be free. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You can live your life as an AA meeting. And, and Lord knows I've done that before. <coughs> Your Christianity can be an AA meeting. Yes. Yes. You're just going through the motions. But there's no real change taking place. Wow. I'm here to tell you that until you are recreated in Christ. Let it, go to Titus chapter 3 verse 5. I was, look, I was thinking about Titus chapter 3 verse 5. And, and what the scripture says right there. It says, not by works of righteousness which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. You see that word regeneration right there? I don't think I've ever said it like this before. Maybe somebody else has. It's like when you get saved, you've been regened. Yes. <laughs> That's not even a real word, but you've been regened. You, you, you've had some genetic tampering, spiritually speaking, that has taken place. Your genetics in Adam through deception took place at the fall. But when you get born again, when you say yes to God and you say, yes, I want you and I want your plan. And you mean it from your heart because the scripture says you got to you got to say it from your heart. And if you don't want it from your heart, you're never going to receive it. And I got I got some good news, but it's some, for some folk it's bad news. The Lord knows whose or his, and the Lord knows how to bring you down the journey to get you to the place yeah. where you will yeah. yield your heart and you will bow your knee, or else you will continue on in rebellion, and things are not going to get better for you, my friends. He regenes you. One scholar talked about it. It was almost like you had anybody that's been in construction. In order to do work, sometimes you got to go get a permit. In order for the permit, in order for the renovation to take place, there has to be a permit. Regeneration is kind of like the permit. It's the original 
conversion factor. It's the time that you realize that you were born a sinner in Adam and you needed new life and you believe that, that Jesus died on the cross for your sin and you called out to him and you believe that he resurrected from the dead and when you called out to him, amen, he came in and he, and he posted the permit on the wall and it said construction can begin. But until that starts, no renovation can take place. And the renewing of the Holy Ghost is the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer, yes, doing yes. a work on the inside of him. Amen. Amen. I never forget an illustration that Brother Larson used one time that after 9-11, that big old pile of rubble. Some of y'all don't even know what 9-11 was. Y'all so young. Bless your little hearts. But in 9-11, them, them trade towers came down, and there was this huge rubble. If you looked at it, it was just, can you just imagine both of those skyscrapers, nothing but a bunch of maple metal. But at the bottom, you could see some little dump trucks. They were rolling in and rolling out. And just like the fall of those buildings, so is the fall of Adam, and so is the fall of your life. And if you will allow the Holy Spirit to put that permit on your heart and you will yield to the Lord, what's going to happen is them trucks will be rolling in and rolling out, rolling in and rolling out, and he'll be removing those lies in your life. He'll be removing that garbage in your life, and he'll be replacing it with the truth of the Word of God. It's not an overnight thing, but I'm here to tell you, well, the first part's an overnight thing, but the rest of it is a lifelong thing. That's right. And you got to want that. Amen. Amen. You got to. And, and again, that, you know, I had some good conversations with my old buddy here lately. And, and it's so true that so oftentimes we just want him to fix our mess. God's not interested in fixing our mess, Christian. It cost Jesus his whole life. Yes. It cost Jesus his whole life, dude. He hung naked on a cross. He was naked and the world ridiculed him and mocked him and laughed at him. The Lord wants to transform us, amen, and he wants us to want him to transform us. He wants us to want to be his children. He wants us to want to be a new creation. We're talking about eternal life here. Amen. Like we want to enter into eternal life and Lord help us. We want to punch a little God clock and say, okay, I did it. I prayed a prayer back when I was eight and I said, yeah, da, 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 da. I re No, no, no. It don't work like that, my friend. You, you, you and I got to be real with the Lord. He's over there watching. He knows his eyes roam to and fro. He knows what's in the heart of man. We're not going to be able to slick. We're not slick going to slick by this thing. We're not. We're not some schemer that's going to get away with something. We're not. You know what I'm saying? Like when we done backhanded deals down an alley one day. No, that ain't, that's not going to work. The Lord sees it all. Amen. He knows. And it's time. Like the time is short. Yes. I'm telling you right now. The time. If you can't read, listen. I keep using these scriptures, but the Pharisees said, oh, the sky's red in the morning. It's about the storm. The sky's red in the evening. We're going to have good weather. And Jesus said, you're a bunch of hypocrites. You can read the sky, but you can't read the signs of the time. If you can't tell that something's shifting on this earth right yeah. now, you've got an antenna that's broke, and you need to get a, a, a repairman to come splice that thing back together. Yeah. Something's happening on the earth, and people are going to make a choice whether or not they're going to serve the Lord or whether or not they're not going to serve the Lord. The Lord told me that two years ago from Mardi Gras when I went carrying that cross out there on the street. He said, son, you need to tell them that there's a line being drawn in the sand and saying, I love you, I love you is not going to work anymore. I want my people called by my name. They're either going to serve me or they're not going to serve me. I'm here to tell you right now, don't take chances with your salvation. I used to quote that scripture all the time. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, but we leave the fear and trembling part off. Work out your own salvation. Don't judge me. Let me do my own salvation and you do you. No, it don't work like that, my friend. With fear and trembling. Yeah. I'm talking about the fear of the Lord. What kind of fear are you talking about that he's going to quash? Well, he, on judgment day, he's going to quash some people. I'm talking about the fear of that I might upset him. Yes. The fear that I might sin against him. Yes. The fear that he loves me so much that he sent his son to die for me. And, and the fear that I would break his heart. Have you ever had your heart broke before? Yes. Have you ever had somebody that you love or you thought, thought you loved treat you wrong? Cheat on you? Do you dirty? Somebody, a good friend of yours, lie on you? Have you ever felt that pain? Imagine the Lord. 
Imagine what he feels. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. We, we live in the midst of a church age that everything's all soft. You can't even tell anybody the truth or else they get upset and they don't ever want to come back. But I'm here to tell you right now, I, like, I, I'm not interested in being that kind of preacher. That i got to water it down to keep everybody happy. I'm worried about keeping one person happy and telling the truth. And I'm here to, hey man, and I'm here to tell you right now that if you let the Lord grab a hold of your heart and you receive the truth, He's going to show up for you. And He will transform you. And He will give you hope. And He will give you joy. The Word of God says with refreshing comes with repentance comes refreshing. It's like a fresh breeze, my friend. You've been toiling with the Lord. You've been going against the Lord. And you've been all bound up. You've been, you've been all burdened down. Like you've been toting some cement sacks on your shoulders. Because you've been weighted down with the sin of your life. I'm here to tell you right now. If you would repent to the Lord. He'd let, you let them cement sacks fall off of you. And you feel light. In the Holy Ghost, and like a wind of refreshing would come over you if you get your heart right with the Lord. Then the devil's gonna come right back, whispering to you again. Don't forget about me over here. You remember how much fun we've been having? You are lying serpent, is what you are. You are a lying devil. You everything you say is a lie. You speak one language and it ain't nothing but lies. I done tried to. Oh, Lord, you can't cut this stuff out. But I done tried to sleep with every girl in Lafayette when I was a teenager. And every single time I thought sleeping with another girl was going to bring me happiness, it didn't do anything but bring me further misery. It kept me, left me empty. I tried to do the drugs that were popular at the time. And every time I did it, I made a fool of myself. I turned into a thief. I turned into a liar. I turned into all kinds of horrible things. I got myself in the trouble and it just was nothing but pain and heartache and time and time again and I'm here to tell you that if you're here tonight you're trying to find happiness and you're trying to find hope in something other than Jesus, you're wasting your time my friend. you're wasting your time oh Lord help us, I need to get redeemed hallelujah, you need to get redeemed tonight praise God, listen the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 6 and 17 I want you to get this tonight that he that has been joined to the Lord is one spirit. I want you to know that. I want you to know that when you truly get saved, and you'll know when you get saved. Let me tell you how you're going to know if you get saved. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is going to move into your heart. Amen. And whatever you were trying to do yesterday, my friend, I'm not saying you won't ever fall back. That's not what I'm saying because the Lord knows the preacher don't fell back. I'm trying to tell you right now, if you truly get saved and the Holy Ghost moves into your heart, you're going to be feeling all conflicted when you start falling back. What is that talking about? I heard one guy tell, tell me one time, dude, when you was preaching, I felt like the Lord was just kicking boxes. He was all up in my life. He was kicking boxes everywhere that he wanted to go. You know what? There wasn't nothing comfortable. He just going around in there kicking stuff around. And you know what? That's what we need. We need the Holy Spirit to start kicking some boxes on the inside yeah. of who we are. We needed to shake us up. Listen to me, church. The church is sick. The church won't even stand up and tell the truth anymore. The people are dying and going to hell. And we want people just to tell us sweet little yeah. words. Yeah. The word of God said that in the last days, people would depart from the faith. And that they'd give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And that they'd heed for themselves. Piles of preachers because they had itchy ears. Yes, yes. Tell me something pleasant, preacher. Tell me something that makes me feel good. Look at that baby. That baby loves the word of God. Right now. That baby that woke up, he's like, preach it, preach it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. Look at Colossians chapter 1. Well, before we go there, I want to tell you, I'm not going to get you to go to these scriptures, but look. Two big problems in the lives of people who call themselves Christians. I'm talking to you Christians tonight. Number one, it's rebellion and stubbornness. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23. He said that, he said that rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Yes, yes. And stubbornness is like idolatry. And we know the word of God and we refuse to repent and we refuse to walk towards the will of God 
And the Lord said, it's a stubborn, it's a, it's a spirit of witchcraft. And then we're stubborn because we're full of pride and we refuse to relent. And we refuse to let him have his way. Lord, help us. And the second thing is doubt and unbelief. Look, we go to that for me. James chapter 5. I believe it's James 5 and I think it starts at verse 5. That's not it. That's wrong. Let's see here. I can't even. I didn't put the wrong, the wrong scripture verse on there. That's the scripture where, where he talks about he talks about doubt and, and unbelief and that. And that whenever, whenever a man, he can't believe the word of God. And what happens is, is that he's like a wave on the ocean. And he's being tossed to and fro. And it says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. I'm here to tell you right now, you could be an unbeliever and be double-minded. And be unstable in all your ways, but you could be a believer right. and be double-minded and not sure exactly what you believe about the Word of God, and uh, making you so unstable, you you you'll you have nothing but conflict and chaos in your life. That's right. Lord, help us. Amen. Look at Colossians chapter one, verses thirteen through sixteen. It says this because we're talking about image and we're talking about being new creations. It says. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. I mean, look, there's a lot of good words in this first verse right here. Redemption means you've been bought back. That means that you were a slave. That, that's what the Bible teaches, that born of Adam, you were born a slave. Right. You were born and you were on the slave market of sin. But God paid a price for you. That's what the scripture says in the letter to the Corinthian church, that you're not your own. You were bought with a price. You were bought with the precious blood of Jesus. Jesus purchased you. you you're not your own. Like if you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian, you can be your own if that's what you choose to do. He gave you a free will. I want you to know that. You don't ever have to come back to this church if you don't want to. Some of you might be feeling hallelujah. You probably wouldn't say that, but like, good good deal. I'll Trust me, preacher. I'll wait. But you don't say you won't be back because you never know. The, the, the Lord knows how to get you on a journey where you, where you go off and you venture to the left and the right. You might find yourself back over here again. You, you, some of them people probably done clicked off of the channel, but they might be back one day. You never know. And all I'm trying to tell you is this, is that on this journey, God knows how to get people. But look what it says. So you've been bought with his blood. But look at those other two words. You've been delivered and you have been translated. I want you to know something tonight. If you have been converted yeah. by receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior and the Holy Spirit came to live in your heart. Amen. That's how you know if you've been converted. If you've been converted, then the Bible says you have been delivered yeah. and you have been Translated. Yeah. You have been delivered from the power of darkness and you have been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. I, I'm trying to tell you that's good news, my friends. I'm trying to tell you that's good news because see, you were born into the kingdom of darkness and you got no help. Self help can't help you. Preachers that are preaching an untrue gospel can't help you. It's only the truth of the word of God that can help you. That, that you come and you bow your knee and you say, I had enough, Lord. I've had enough and I yield to you. I, I get it now. I, I quit. Like Roberto Duran fighting Sugar Ray Leonard. No mocks. No mocks, Lord. No more. No more. I throw up the white flag. I, I surrender. I surrender all. I've been a world, well, been a wretch, Lord, yes, to yes, save me. Yes. But you've been delivered. Amen. You've been delivered from the power of darkness, and you've been translated if you're born again. Yes, oh, yes. Yes. That's what the Word of God says. Yes. I don't want you to be like a man tossed on the ocean and double-minded. I want you to be a woman or a man of God that comes to the place where you begin to believe. The word of God. 
Because if you will believe the word of God, you will see the truth transform your life. Yes, yes. He is not a man that he should lie. Amen. He tells the truth. That's it. And look what it says in verse 15. It says he is the image of the invisible God. I want you to know that he is the image of the invisible God. Mankind, when he was created, was created in Adam in the image and likeness of God. But then the fall came and now his image was marred because he was born in the image of Adam who was fallen. But now Jesus, hallelujah, God the Father sent us Jesus, yes. the darling of heaven, the image of the invisible God. You want to know what God looks like? He looks like Jesus. Oh, he had a beard. He's got long hair like they tell us or he walked up. You want to see God? Look at Jesus. See how he handled things. See what he loved. See what he, see what he hated. See why he cried. Yeah. See, see where, what, he, what he did. See how he went out of his way for the Samaritan yes, woman. Yes. See how he laid down his life. See how, see how he tarried in the garden. When, when everything that was, it, that was in him was pulling on him. And, and the stress uh, of dying for the whole, and the weight of the sin of the world was on his back. And capillaries broke in his sweat glands. And the Bible says he was sweating blood. That's the Jesus. That's how you'll see the heart of God. That's how much he loves you. That's how much he loves me. You need to know that tonight. He loves you. He loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die for you. And the enemy wants to lie to you. And he wants to tell you that something else loves you. And nothing else loves you like Jesus. Ain't no man going to love you like Jesus loves you. Come on, sister. I'm trying to tell you the truth tonight. Ain't no man. And until you learn how to fall in love with Jesus, you're going to keep seeking love in all the wrong places. That's what the song used to say. Seeking love in all the wrong places. And you, men of God... Or you, men without God, you keep on searching. You keep on looking for your happiness in a woman. I'm here to tell you, till you learn how to love Jesus, you're going to get caught up in a lust trap is what's going to happen to you, my friend. You better learn how to get all to Jesus. You better learn how to be married to the Lord before you start trying to find that woman, before you start trying to find that man. Because you're going to get caught in a lust trap. You're going to get snared by the fowler. That old bird trapper, he gonna get you. Oh, you might have to be like one of the coyotes and chew your paw to try to get out of there. But you can't. Only the Holy Spirit can get you out of that. So he is the image of the invisible God. But what I want you to know is that the creator lives in you and he lives through you. Are you a Christian tonight? If you're, listen, I'm not trying to make you feel weird, but if you're a Christian, I go ahead and just go ahead and wave to the Lord. Come on, if you've received Christ as your hallelujah, if you've received Jesus as your amen, amen, I want you to know that if you're saved tonight, the creator of the universe lives in you, and he wants to live through you, and that's what you were created for. That's right. Amen. Come on. That's what you were created for. Yes, we got some guy called from North Louisiana over here. Ain't no telling what kind of hunt they do over there. We got some people from Pierre Part over here. You know them dudes know how to fish and hunt. We got, we, you know, we got people that, and, and look, and we'll try to find happiness and joy in just about anything that you can imagine. There ain't nothing wrong with hunting and fishing, especially if you can feed your family, right? So I, that's not what I'm saying. But what I'm trying to say is people spend their whole life. I was telling somebody the other day, I didn't work with at least two different doctors. They work 40 years of their life as a doctor. They retire and then they play golf for 10 years and then they die. <coughs> And some people, we act like he who dies with the most toys win. You ain't Pharaoh and you ain't bringing nothing with you when you go to the other side. And ain't the river sticks you're going to cross. You're either going to cross Jordan or you ain't crossing at all. Yes. And Jordan is the river that the children of Israel crossed when they entered into the promised land. And you ain't crossing into the promised land unless you got Jesus in your heart, my friend. Praise God. So the creator lives in you if you're saved tonight. That's what it says in Galatians 2 verse 20. It says, I'm crucified with Christ Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Look at that. Not I. So if you're saved tonight, I need you to understand this. The old man is crucified with Jesus. It's something that happens supernaturally. You can't understand it with your logical mind. And if it's never happened to you, this sounds like a bunch of googly goo. Amen. 
Yep. It sounds like a bunch of, like, what is he even talking about? But if it's happened to you, you know what I'm talking about. You may not be where you want to be, but you know good and well that you are, you need to be thankful that you're not where you used to be. Amen. And some people will be like, but I'm back in bondage again, preacher. Well, let me tell you something. You ought to stand up and you ought to lift your hands to heaven and you ought to thank him. Hallelujah. That you know how to be free. Because he's going to still set you free. Amen. The word of the Lord says that the Lord knows who are his. And let those that are called by the Lord depart from iniquity, my friends. The Lord knows you belong to him. He gets the last say, so he owns you. His blood purchased you. The devil don't get the last say, so on you. Amen. It's just time we start cooperating with the Lord. Yeah. And quit cooperating with that lying devil. That old fork-tongued serpent. Oh, Lord, trying to inject his poison in us. I'm here to tell you that you've been crucified with Christ. On the day that you put your faith in him. I used to do this all the time, and y'all see me do it, and I'm getting kind of, I'm a little bit on the chunky side now, and I, I can't get up and down as fast as I used to. But see, I used to say this, is, is that when I was born in Adam, I was born in sin. But then the day that I put faith in Christ, the, whole, the Bible says the Holy Spirit baptized me into Christ. He, he changed, he translated me. You remember we read that scripture? He, he delivered me from darkness and he translated me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son. Yeah. So when I said yes to Jesus, hallelujah, the Lord's like, boop, the Holy Spirit put me in Christ, amen, and my birth in Adam, yes. I died. The old man died in Christ. And now a new man has been resurrected to newness of life. I, your old man, if you're saved this morning, I mean tonight, has died with Christ Jesus. And your new man is resurrected and you've been regened and you're a new creation. And I can't say this enough to you to try to convince you. I need help, Holy Spirit. You got to convince these people that belong to you. Yeah. You got to convince them that that's what your word says. That when they get saved, they've been redeemed. And that they're a new creation in Christ. And that they can be free from the lies and the bondage of evil. Hallelujah. Yes. I see, I don't look. Some people, some people believe that, 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 that their trouble is demonic. I'm not going to sit here and tell you you ain't got no demonic problems. <laughs> But I'm here to tell you right now, ain't no demon living in me. I'm here to tell you right now, the word of God says, I have Jesus living in me. I'm possessed by the creator of this universe. He created dominions, principalities, and powers. He lives in me. Those entities don't have power over me. The Lord, word of the Lord says, he defeated them. So, Colossians chapter 2, verse 15 says, he triumphed over them yes. through the cross. Right. The Bible says Jesus defeated principalities and powers yes. and spiritual. He defeated them yes. when he died at the cross. Yes. Problem is we don't believe yes. it. That's right. Problem yes. is we don't believe yes. it. No, we need to start believing and not just with our head, with our heart. Yes. And we need to start coming, coming clean with the Lord. And we need to let him crucify our flesh. Yes. And we need to let him have his way in our heart. And as long as we live in rebellion against the Lord, then that's exactly what's going to happen. That's right. We're going to find chaos. We're going to have, we're going to find, we're going to find heartache. Listen to me. I, when I said that, I'm talking to you Christians tonight. I'm talking to you people that understand who you are, Christ. You ain't got no problem with the devil. You got a problem with your flesh, yes. my friend. And it's time we learn how to die to yes. our flesh. Yes, yes. And it's time we let the Holy Spirit have his way in our heart. And he will heal us. Yes, amen. amen. Now, maybe you walked up in here tonight and you don't know the Lord. And maybe you're feeling kind of itchy, twitchy. And maybe, you, yeah, you might, you, might have a, you might have a demonic problem. I'm here to tell you that the same Jesus that saves folks yes. is the same Jesus that has set people free from you. Yes. And the whole way he can do it is by the fact that he died on the cross. Amen. And he gives us power. Amen. The devil has no power over you. You start yielding to the Holy Spirit. The word of God says you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Yes. Amen. Look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. It says this. And they put on the new man. Which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. See, you're being created in Christ. 
You're now receiving the image of God because Jesus is the image of the invisible God. And when you got saved, your spirit became one with the spirit. And I'm here to tell you tonight that Jesus, if you're saved, lives on the inside of you. And the Holy Spirit says that we, the Apostle Paul said through the Holy Spirit, let Christ be formed in you. Whenever you and I yield to the will of God, he starts working and he starts heating up the fire. Amen. And I, what did he say? How's that song? Oh, go ahead. I know you can sing it without the microphone, but just go ahead and sing that for us, Micah. That part right there about the fire. You are the fire inside of me. You are the flame inside my heart. And that part about till you and I are one. Sing that for us. Honey. Come be the fire inside of me. Come be the flame upon my heart. Come be the fire inside of me until you and I are one. Amen. Huh? That's got to be the cry of the heart of this people. Yes. Yes, yes. Let your flame burn in you, Lord. Yes, yes. Keep those boxes around, Lord. Yes. Bring me to my knees. Yes. Here, let your flame burn in yes. you, oh Lord. Until you and I become one. Until my cry is broken. Until my arrogance is broken. Until my stubbornness is broken. Until my divisive spirit is broken. Until my lust is broken. Until my drug addiction is broken. Lord, don't let your hand off of me, Lord. Uh, I heard a preacher on the video yesterday. I actually listened to it twice. And he said, I'm, I'm trying to plead with you because I don't want to stand on the side of you. On that day, whenever you stand before the Lord. And I want to. I want you to get it now so that you don't hear those words. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Oh, Lord, help us. The day is coming, my friend. Judgment day is coming. We're going to stand before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's merciful and he's gracious and he's kind. And the word of God says he's long suffering. He's not like you. He's not like me. <laughs> If you tell me something I don't like, I might be mad at you tonight. I might be, he's long-suffering. Yes. It means you can't make him stop loving you. You can't make him stop loving you. The devil tried to convince you, oh, you, you've gone too far. No, he's a liar. You wouldn't be in here tonight if you'd gone too far. I want you to know how much he loves you. Yes. Amen. It's proven on the cross. God commendeth or shows his love for us, and now while we were yet yes. sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So look, you're a new man, and you're renewed in knowledge after the image of him. See, the knowledge part is important, because yes. everything in your mind is going to try to convince you of the opposite. The devil's going to try to get control of your mind, and he's going to try, oh, no, 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 you're not good enough. Don't you let that preacher lie to you. You remember what we did last night? You remember what we did last week? No, nope, I got a claim on your soul. No, I'm here to tell you right now, he's a liar. That's right. And you need to divorce him. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one time that the Lord's okay with divorce right there. You need to divorce that relationship with the devil, my friend. And you need to marry you, Jesus. <laughs> you need to get married to Jesus. And you need to be faithful by the grace of God to Jesus. I need to be faithful by the grace of God to Jesus. And if you'll do it, I'm telling you right now. Because listen to me. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm here to tell you and you. And you need to go tell your friends tomorrow. It's going to go down. Yes. It's going to happen what the Bible says. Y'all think it's not. Y'all think it's not. Sometimes I've thought, oh yeah, man, this is sci-fi, science fiction kind of fiction story here. I'm here to tell you it's going to happen. That's right. We are going to stand before God. When we breathe our last breath here, we're going to stand in his presence. And it ain't going to be no knuckle bumps. Thanks for dying for me, dude. Thanks for coming through, bro. Yeah. You and I, man, we're tight like that. It ain't going to be nothing like that. He's holy. He's righteous. Hallelujah. His eyes are like a flame of fire. His hair is white like wool. His feet are burnished brass. He's coming back like a judge. He's going to judge the earth in righteousness. He came the first time lowly and riding on a 
donkey because he came to lower himself to pay the penalty of the sins of man. But he's coming back on a white stallion, my friend. And he's coming back to judge. And he's going to say to those on the left side, he's going to say, depart from me. And, and Jesus preached on it. He said that hell was real. He said, hell, some of you people in here, I have had conversations with at least a couple of y'all. And you're not saying that you, you felt it. You slipped. And, and one person told me that demons were biting at the feet. And, the, and I've heard people talk about the fires of hell licking at them. And the hounds of hell saying, we got you now. We've got you now. Jesus said that it's a place where the worm doesn't die. The fire is in question. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm here to tell you, if you got an internet pornography problem, and it, listen, it, I heard the preacher talking about, I can't get it out of my mind. He said, whatever your bondage was, you'll be over there lusting and lusting for all eternity, and you won't have no way to relieve your lust. If your thing is some kind of a drug, you'll be having the worst desire to get a fix, and you'll never, ever, ever be able to get, and this isn't just for a weekend, this is is it just for a week? This is for all eternity. And we ain't got no preachers that are willing to tell the truth about hell no more because we scared you ain't going to come back next week. I'm here to tell you right now, I'm going to have to stand before God and give an account for what I say. Hallelujah. And it's time for the truth to be spoken. It's time for people to recognize this stuff is real, man. We're not playing games. This isn't getting your car repossessed. This is talking about your eternal soul. Lord, help us. Jesus. Help us, Lord. I wanted to close with this. Colossians 2, verse 15. Through, we're going to go through 19. This is where he said he spoiled principalities. I want you to know that he triumphed over them. Amen. I don't have time to, to really do this justice, but look, it means he defeated them and he stripped them of their power. I'm talking about fallen angels and demon spirits. Yeah. That's right. Their power has been broken. Yes. broken they have no power over the child of God. None. Unless we open the door. And then the scripture says this. We write these things to you so that no man might sin. But if a man does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. True repentance will restore you into the presence of God right. so fast. But look what it says right here, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in need or drink or respect of a holy day or the new moon or Sabbath days. Don't let anybody judge your own walk. But look, the Lord himself is going to judge you either in or you're out, either right or wrong. But everybody starts adding stuff to the gospel. Listen, I've been saved since, I don't know, 1987, something like that. And they've had so many changes and so many new things that have come into the church world since I first got saved. It was going on 2,000 years ago. It was going on when I got saved. It's still going on today. Look what it says right here. He said, let no man judge you, verse 18. Let no man beguile you. But the word beguile means to deceive you. Let no man deceive you of what? Of your reward. And a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. See, that's what they were doing back there. In the park. That's what they were doing then. But what are they doing today? What are they adding to Jesus today? What are they saying that needs to happen today besides what Jesus has already done? What are they adding to the equation to say, oh, yeah, you got Jesus, but you really need this too? What are they adding? You got to be careful, Christian, because people are going to try to deceive you out of your reward. Yes, yes. Worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which they have not seen, vainly puffed up in their fleshly mind. And look at this, is, this is where it ends right here. Yes. And not, verse 19, and not holding the head. That's it. <laughs> not holding the head. I mean, this may be a bad illustration right here, but look, if this was the head, you know what the head is? Anybody know what the head is? Jesus. 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 So this doesn't look anything like Jesus' head. But if it was, you'd have to cradle it 
and you have to hold on to it like it was the most precious thing you ever found. You never want to let it go. And every lying doctrine and every other thing that tries to come by to try to convince you to let go of the head, you have to renounce it. And you have to let it fall to the ground. That's because right. if you don't hold to the head, you can't be nourished. That's right. See, he nourishes his body, which is you and I, and we're all individual parts of that. He nourishes his body through the head. It's talking about ligaments and things like that, but I'm here to tell you, I believe really what the scripture was talking about is the nervous system. I don't, I don't like, it's talking about how the, in a physical body, how the head gives the commands and, and, and the signal is sent through the body that tells the body how to move and to yes. operate. And Jesus is the head of the church Amen. and he's the head of your life. If you've received him as your Lord and Savior, and he's sending the signal mm. through the Holy that's Spirit, good, good. and he's speaking to you, singers, musicians, y'all can come up. He's sending the signal, and he's speaking to you. And he, yeah. he's wanting to grab a hold of your heart, amen? And he's wanting, to, he's wanting to speak to you, and he's wanting you to yield to him, and he's wanting you to, to let him have his way. In your heart, in your life. Amen. Yes, amen. Amen. As they're getting ready, listen, I want to say it. You know, somebody made a comment on Facebook whenever I asked everybody to stand up Sunday. And a few different people stood up. One guy, one person stood up for salvation. And one person put on, on there. I was in my recliner, like he said, and I stood up. Praise God. And so maybe that's a, you again tonight. Because I'm going to ask you, listen. If you've never received Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you think that you prayed a prayer but nothing ever changed, I'm here to tell you I'm questioning whether you're really saved. I mean, I don't know. I'm not the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray Christ tonight. Listen, you know, I'm not going to ask you to come to the front, but I'm going to ask you to stand up. Because in order for you to get saved, you've got to take a step of faith. It's got to be your faith that beats his faith. Amen. Jesus had faith and he went to the cross. And now your faith has to meet his faith. They got to come together. They got to collide. And if you've never made a public profession of Jesus, you need to make it tonight. I don't even recommend you do it if you just try to do it in your head. But if you feel something stirring in your heart and you know that you need the Lord, I want to encourage you to stand up tonight. Amen. If that's you in this place, I want you to stand up tonight if that's you. Praise God. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Gally, I want you to come pray over here. Amen. Gally, come pray for, for, for him right here. Amen. John, I, I, want, I want you to go lay your 